When it comes to the most terrifying creatures to ever rule the skies, one name almost always dominates. Quetzalcoatlus, a flying reptile the size of a Cessna 172, with a wingspan wider than a bus and a beak nearly eight feet long. It's the monster we all know, and for good reason. But Quetzalcoatlus wasn't the only sky giant to haunt Earth's past. In its shadow, we've forgotten something just as bizarre, and maybe even creepier. Meet Pelagornis, the largest bird to ever fly. With wings that stretch nearly 24 feet and a beak lined with bony spikes, this thing was evolutionary nightmare fuel. But where did this sky monster come from? How did something so massive and so strange even manage to fly? To understand that, we need to go back. Back to a time when the age of birds was just beginning, and Pelagornis ruled the winds alone. Unlike most flying fossils that look like they escaped from a horror movie, this wasn't some feathered dinosaur or ancient pterosaur. This was a true bird, and not just any bird. This was Pelagornis sandersi, the largest known species of the bony-toothed birds. It ruled the skies during the late Oligocene to early Pleistocene, roughly 25 to 2.5 million years ago, long after the dinosaurs disappeared. Fossils of Pelagornis have been discovered on every continent, from North America to Europe and even Antarctica, proving it was a global traveler. Imagine a world of endless ocean, dotted with scattered islands and remote coastlines. In that world, Pelagornis wasn't flapping, it was gliding, soaring effortlessly for hours, maybe even days above the waves, barely needing to touch land at all. What makes Pelagornis truly extraordinary isn't just its jaw-dropping wingspan, but its bizarre, almost alien anatomy. Unlike any bird alive today, it had sharp, bony projections along its beak, resembling teeth but were not actually teeth. This odd-looking toothy giant was no doubt an expert hunter, perfectly adapted to life above the ocean's surface, ruling the skies in a way no other bird ever did. Pelagornis was definitely one of the weirdest and most incredible flyers to ever exist, but somehow we don't talk about it enough. Maybe because it wasn't a dinosaur, maybe because it's too weird to believe, but in truth, it was real. At first glance, its most striking feature was its massive wingspan, estimated to stretch up to 20 to 24 feet. That's wider than most small airplanes and larger than any bird alive today. To put it in perspective, that's a little over the length of three king-size mattresses laid end to end, flying above your head with bone teeth and a beak built like a weapon. This gigantic wingspan gave Pelagornis the ability to soar effortlessly for hours, riding ocean winds with minimal energy. But size alone doesn't explain how this massive bird managed to fly. Its bones were incredibly lightweight, like the aluminum frame of an airplane wing, hollow on the inside, but built to handle enormous stress without breaking. A characteristic shared with modern birds, but unlike modern birds, Pelagornis was a master at dynamic soaring, a flying technique that exploits the wind gradients over waves to stay aloft without flapping much. The freakiest feature of Pelagornis, however, was its beak. Unlike any bird alive now, Pelagornis had bony tooth-like spikes called pseudo-teeth lining the edges of its long, narrow beak. Paleontologists call them pseudo-teeth because while they look like sharp teeth, they weren't made of enamel and didn't grow from sockets like ours. Instead, they were extensions of the jawbone covered in a keratin sheath, the same protein that forms our fingernails and hair. For years, Scientists were puzzled by these strange spikes along Pelagornis' beak. Early fossil reconstructions often ignored them or assumed they were just rough jaw edges. Some even mistakenly thought Pelagornis had real teeth, which didn't fit with it being a bird. It wasn't until more detailed fossil studies and modern imaging techniques came along that paleontologists realized these were not true teeth at all. Instead, they were unique bony projections covered in keratin like sharp hooks perfectly designed to snag slippery fish in midair. This breakthrough completely changed how we understand Pelagornis' hunting skills and its place in the skies. On top of that, Pelagornis had a remarkably streamlined body. Its long, slender neck and lightweight skull minimized drag during flight. And if we are to compare it to Quetzalcoatlus, the largest flying animal ever, the differences are striking. Quetzalcoatlus had wings made of a skin and muscle membrane, stretched between an elongated fourth finger and its body, much like a bat. These membranous wings were strong and massive, 
but less efficient for long-distance gliding. In contrast, Pelagornis had feathered bird-like wings with long, narrow proportions optimized for dynamic soaring. And while Quetzalcoatlus was the largest flying reptile ever, it likely stayed closer to land or coastal areas, whereas Pelagornis ruled the vast pelagic skies, an ocean hunter that took flight to a level rarely seen in the animal kingdom. But to understand how this bizarre sky giant came to be, we need to go back, way back, to its evolutionary roots. Pelagornis evolved from a long lineage of seabirds known as Pelagornithids, or bony-toothed birds. The earliest known member of this group, Protodontopteryx, appeared around 62 million years ago in what is now New Zealand, not long after the mass extinction that wiped out the dinosaurs. Back then, these birds were relatively modest in size, no bigger than modern gulls or cormorants. But over millions of years, as they adapted to life over vast, fish-rich oceans, natural selection, nature's way of playing favorites, leaned toward longer wings, bigger bodies, and more efficient gliding. And though Pelagornis sandersi often steals the spotlight, it wasn't alone in this giant experiment. Its family tree includes species like Pelagornis myokinus, with an estimated wingspan of around 13 to 16 feet, and Dasornis, an earlier giant that may have reached wingspans of 16 to 18 feet. These earlier and sometimes smaller cousins illustrate how this group gradually scaled up over millions of years, eventually peaking with Pelagornis sandersi, the largest known member. Fossil finds from Africa, Europe, and the Americas reveal how widespread and successful these, these bony-toothed birds were during the Eocene and Miocene epochs. So no, Pelagornis wasn't always a giant, it became one, slowly, relentlessly, shaped by an oceanic world that demanded efficiency, range, and reach. Today, Pelagornis's closest living relatives are believed to be waterfowl and seabirds. Think albatrosses, pelicans, storks, and ducks. While none of these modern birds boast bony teeth or wingspans as vast as a small plane, they share important evolutionary traits. Incredible endurance for long-distance flight, specialized adaptations for life over oceans and waterways, and in some cases, surprisingly similar skull structures. Among them, the albatross is perhaps the most spiritually similar. It too is a master glider, riding ocean winds for days on end, barely flapping its wings, an echo of what Pelagornis once did on a much grander scale. But in comparison, even the largest albatross barely hits half of Pelagornis's wingspan. But if birds like the albatross still soar today, why did giants like Pelagornis go extinct? The answer isn't simple, but it likely lies in a perfect storm of environmental shifts. Around three million years ago, global climates began to change dramatically. Ocean currents shifted, sea levels rose and fell, and many of the rich marine ecosystems Pelagornis depended on began to collapse or move. These birds were ultra-specialized, built for open ocean gliding with long takeoff runs and narrow feeding habits. When conditions changed, they couldn't adapt fast enough. There's also the possibility that competition played a role. As smaller, more versatile seabirds evolved and diversified, they may have outcompeted Pelagornis for food and nesting space. And unlike today's coastal birds, Pelagornis likely needed large, undisturbed cliffside or island habitats to nest, habitats that may have disappeared with rising seas or volcanic shifts. And so, somewhere between 2.5 and 3 million years ago, the last of these bony-toothed giants quietly disappeared. No catastrophic extinction event, no dramatic fossil graveyards marking their fall, just an eerie silence settling over the very skies they once ruled. Today all that remains are scattered bones, hidden in cliffs and ocean floors, whispering the story of a vanished era. Kindly like the video and subscribe if you enjoyed it. And as always, I'm DM, see you in the next one.